What's good, guys? It's Girl Facts. Hope you guys are well today. We have a special guest. You might recognize her on The Voice, blessing us with her amazing talent. I am joined by Mariam Davina. Hey. Hey. You look good. Wait, 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 wait. Thank you. Where did you come from? <laughs> I got, I got, I got ready for this. Oh, okay. Is it, are you telling us the truth, or did you just? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going, I'm going. Um, out after I've got a gig later on in the night. Ooh. Where you, where are you performing? Um, I'm performing at Freedom Bar. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So what, what, what kind of vibes can the people expect from you? So, um, Freedom Bar is like um on Tuesday they have this night called Soul Tuesday. Okay. So it's when they have like different types of singers, and then you just come, you sing like free songs. So you can sing originals, you can sing covers, and it's just really vibes, like good vibes. Um, the people, the audience are lovely. It's just good vibes, you know. It's fun. It's like a just a night of music, hearing amazing singers. Oh, I love that. I love that. What? What kind of person are you when it comes to like prepping before you hit hit on that stage? Are you the type of person that you're nervous? Because from seeing your performance, you you don't play. You're like, we're good to go. Let's hit the stage. Like, what really? What are you actually like? Do you know what? Yeah, I don't get nervous if I'm being so honest. Really? Like, yeah, I don't because even um when I was on The Voice. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, you didn't look nervous. Yeah, I think because I grew up singing in church and I was always on stage, like, and my church was big. So because I was always on stage, always in the middle with like a big crowd, I got used to it very young. Ooh. So um, I wasn't nervous. No, I just, I actually don't get nervous. I think it's more, um, I just need to make sure that I've practiced, make sure that I'm ready to hit the stage and don't overthink. It's more like, not overthinking but nervous nerves I don't really get nerves yeah you're like nervous where <laughs> what, what, what <laughs> yeah, <is that? laughs> now before we get into your single because of you we're going to talk about your journey on the voice what made you want to apply for the voice back in 2021 um do you know what I've always wanted to do like a singing show of some sort yeah um but I just didn't know really which one to go for. And then I was gonna do like X Factor. I was considering X Factor, but you know how COVID and it got canceled early. So I was like, the voice is really good because it focuses on your voice mm. um, as well as just like the other stuff. So I was like, yeah, let me just do it. And it was kind of like, am I gonna do it? Am I not gonna do it? And then um, I, I actually got scouted for the show. Ooh, um, okay. And I was like, okay, yeah, let me just do it. You know, it was during lockdown. So it was great because it was it was harder in terms of because it was COVID, so everything was so restricted. Mm -hmm. And I like performing in front of an audience. I think it's it's much better. It's fun. Do you know what I mean? So I like performing in front of an audience, and it was just a virtual audience and the coaches, um, which was sad. But it was great. It was a great experience. And I think um, I think yeah, I just was like, let me just go for it. Let me do it. Um, this is also another step in my career, you know, um, more people get to see me as for exposure and I actually get to be on an incredible platform such as The Voice. So, yeah, I was just like, let me just go for it. Yeah. So, of course, for those who were familiar and for those who don't know, you performed Anyone by Demi Lovato for your blind auditions. Now, I know we spoke about nerves and we spoke about, you know, performing on stage, but... Like, let's just be real. When you went on that blind auditions and you were performing, were the nerves kicking in? And were you thinking to yourself, I need at least one coach, one judge to turn around? <laughs> just one, just one. <laughs> like, what was going through your mind when you're performing that single? Because I'm not going to lie, that performance right there, it was amazing. You showcased Thank your vocals. You. you brought me to tears. Like, yeah literally so i want to know from you like that in that moment what was what was going through your mind like were you actually nervous the fact that nobody no judge was going to turn around or i don't think i was nervous i think i was thinking am i going to get thrown off because Ooh. you know when you're watching the show and you hear they press the red buzzer and they turn around i was thinking when they press it is is that going to throw me off because i didn't know that so basically the sound is added afterwards. So oh, when they actually yeah. turned around, there was no sound. So it didn't throw me off. That's all I could think of. Oh, really? If someone turns around for me, 
am I gonna get through enough? That's I, crazy. Yeah, we, I usually, actually, we 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 hear we think that we hear the sound like. That's all I was thinking about. I usually don't get thrown off no matter like what, but because yeah. I'm on a big stage like that, you know, like there's just so many thoughts going through my mind. So I was like, uh, but when, and also, yes, I was thinking, oh my gosh, what if no one turns around? Because there's been years where there's so many incredible singers. Even on my year, there was a lot of incredible singers that didn't get turns, you know? So I was literally like, imagine I don't get a turn. But I didn't want to think like that. I was just like... Mm. Like, Lord, I leave this in your hands. Like, I'm here to do what I came here to do. If it's your will, it will happen. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, like, I think I was more so thinking about the turning and, like, how that was going to go. Yeah, I was nervous for you because I'm thinking to myself, why are these judges, like, hesitate and just press the button and turn <laughs> around? Like, where well, you think to yourself, if I had Will I Am, turn around first. Like, does that go through your money? you just like, you know what, I don't care as long as I get through. Um... I thought about it, um, but I think I just hadn't made like a definite decision mm. um, because I also wanted to see like what they said. Um, and yeah, like I think I had an idea in my mind of who I would choose. Um, and also my parents had who they wanted me to choose as well. But obviously it's not their decision. Um, but yeah, like, so everybody had their decisions of who they wanted me to choose, but I kind of was like, I'm just gonna go do it. And when I got on the stage, I think my mind did change. Like it just was like, I don't know. I just didn't, I don't know how to explain it. But when they actually turned and I had to decide, cause it was free coaches, when yeah. they actually turned and I had to decide, I think it's just what dropped in my spirit and like my heart like was like, okay, this person. And I just said that person, you know? Um, and I ended up choosing Sir Tom Jones, who's a legend in the game. And like, he's still doing his thing till this day. He's worked with literally everyone. So um, yeah, it was it was a great experience. But yeah, no, I was just, I don't know. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna have an idea. Cause I feel like you can have an idea in your head of who you're gonna choose, but then when you get there, everything changes cause it's in the moment. Yeah. So yeah. Which one was your, best performance on The Voice? Was it like your blind auditions, your semi-finals? If, if you had to pick one, which one is your best one? I would pick my semi-finals. That performance, I love. Like, that even brought me to tears watching it. Like, yeah. Um, it I, gave me goosebumps. I was like, oh, the phone <laughs> calls. Because <laughs> when I compare the three, even though it was like um, t a quick turnaround, I grew anyway, like I grew immensely, like my voice grew, uh, my um, confidence grew, like taking over the stage. Like I think that last performance was like, okay, I'm leaving it all on the stage. Obviously I didn't know it was gonna be my last performance at the time, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I was just like, I'm gonna leave it all on the stage. And that's literally my favorite performance. Like I would literally watch it every night to just oh. kind of remind me of where I've, where I've got to and where I'm gonna keep going and stuff like that. Mm. Just kind of like a, a reminder. Um, yeah, I think the semi-final performance, that performance was, and I loved the song as well, so. <laughs> did you think it was gonna leave that night? Like, did you have a feeling that you was gonna go or? No, you know, no. I actually didn't think I was. I, it's so funny because I'm literally thinking back to the moment. I remember when we were standing there because it was um, three people. It was between three people. Yeah. And I remember when we, I was standing there and I was just like, <laughs> I was just standing there grinning. I was smiling from cheek to cheek. From yeah. to cheek. Like, I was smiling. I was just standing there like this. Even when they said that it was... Um, the other contestant had gone through I was still standing there smiling like I didn't even I didn't think it I flinched or anything um but no I didn't think I knew I was gonna go um but you know it was the end of that journey and there's still more stuff to come so I wasn't really obviously it's hot like it's it is sad um but I do believe that everything happens for a reason and whatever is God's plan will come to pass you know so that was just the journey that God took me on um, on the voice but now I'm on to bigger and better things so that's how I see it like obviously now we're in this whole generation a whole different era like back back in the day X Factor um Britain's Got Talent America's Got Talent American Idol the voice like was so big back then like yeah everybody just wanted to like showcase their talent on these shows and now we're in an era where we're in the, this digital world where people are just 
just showcasing their talent online, right? And you coming out of the voice, looking back and like seeing your journey right now, do you feel like, like if you had an advice for anyone that wants to pursue their talent or their career, would you advise them to go on the voice right now in this generation? Or do you feel like it doesn't really matter like that? Like we have social media now, like we can just showcase our talent on social media. Like what, what do you make of that? I think. I would say because of the generation, like how everything's going now, I would say there's like pros and cons. So I mm. think pros can be um, it really builds your confidence because some people you you never would get that opportunity anyway. So being on The Voice is an incredible opportunity because you get to see how life is like as a star, you know, mm. you're treated as the star that you want to become. So that first-hand experience before you actually go into that the world of being that star um I think is good it's like for preparation um and yes it can help but I do think nowadays people don't really watch the voice so um mm. I feel like even if you're going to do the voice like don't rely on that don't think that that's gonna you know don't rely on that like make sure that you're putting in the groundwork behind closed doors like doing your social media and stuff because really and truly that's where it's at now like mm. That's literally where it's at right now. Yes, Instagram, you know, but TikTok is really where it's at right now. And um, the voice will give you a boost because people will be like, oh, like you're amazing. Da, 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 da. But really and truly, it's not even like you're going on there to um, sing your own music. You're you're going there to do covers. So it's just showing you performing and like showing the the potential of the star that you, you are, you know. Um, mm. But with actually doing the work and you know doing your social media I think that's more beneficial like in this day and age um but yeah I think it's still good for exposure like I wouldn't shut it down at all like if you would want to do it especially because a lot of people have our incredible talents but the confidence is not there you know mm -hmm. and sometimes you need to do that so that it can build a certain level of confidence in you and um build your skin as well like tough skin because you have to have tough skin in this industry it's not easy yeah. It's really not easy. Like, um, it can take you years to get your break, but you just have to keep going. It's about how you stay the course. So even like being taken off the show and not winning, that could be your first like big rejection. And that could allow you to be able to take on more things that are coming, you know, because you're gonna have you're gonna have rejections, but you just, it's just how you deal with it and how you pick up from those points. Um, so yeah, I think it's good. Um but yeah, also do your work as well behind closed doors. Like, make sure you're doing your social media as well. Um, they both go hand in hand. Yeah, because not no one's gonna do it for you. You're gonna do it for yourself. Like, hundred percent, especially in this industry. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah there's because literally, like, there's so many people out like out there showcasing their talent now, and sometimes you don't even know if people are actually doing it because they wanna do be in that field or they're just doing it for fun you know yeah. so what are you doing that's going to stand out you know that's kind of mm. the thing that we always have to think about um and really and truly nowadays people are just doing a lot of people are just doing it for fun and there's no one to tell them that they can't do that because you can do it you know yeah. but if you want to do it as a career you just have to be willing to push through all of that noise not noise but you know what I mean like you have to push through all of the people that are just doing it for fun and make sure that you're being like yeah hey hey I'm here I'm trying to do this full time I'm trying to be a star you know um but yeah so speaking of all of that what's been life been like after the voice I know you've been releasing visuals releasing singles booked and busy performing but I want I want to I want I want you to tell us what's life really been like after the voice after leaving the show what has it really been like so after leaving the show, I, because I started uni when I started The Voice as well. So Yeah, you graduated, um, haven't you, as well? Yeah, I just graduated. Yeah. So I graduated in July this year. And um, I after The Voice, I literally was just um, focusing on my own music in the studio. I was in the studio prior, but I think I was like, okay, cool. Like, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. I have to make my own music. I have to write all the time. So I just got into building myself as that artist yeah. um because now I 
I have this exposure. I have to build myself as the artist, keep going and stuff, um, and just make sure that I stay relevant. Even if it was a thing where I didn't really straight away because you can't really straight away after the show. But like, even if I didn't really straight away, I was making sure that I always had covers on lock and did like my little freestyle covers and always had visuals or just some sort just to keep myself relevant to when I did release. And I wanted to make sure that when I did release, I would stand out. Mm. Um, that's why, like you were saying about my visuals, I love making sure that my visuals stand out with the colors, with the concepts, with everything. Like I'd rather take my time and do something that is just people are like, wow, like mm. she really put her time and put her heart into this than to just release. Yeah. You know, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. Um, I'm currently um working on my first EP that's coming out next year. So I'm really Ooh. excited for that. Um, I released two singles from that and um hoping to release another one before the end of the year. And then in the new year, um, you guys will be getting the full project. So I'm really excited about that. And I've just really been recording. Um, I've been collabing as well, and I've also been just performing all over London. So I perform, like, for example, today I've got a gig. So, like, I just perform everywhere I can, singing my original songs, because you never know who you're going to meet. Um, and every time you perform, you're picking up new audience, like, new people that you can make fans, you know? Um, so that's what I've been doing, building my fan base, building my artistry, making sure that I'm out there than just behind the scenes. Like, I feel like, especially in this day and age, Yes, you can be on social media, but you actually need to be out there as well, as much as like the live matters as much as the internet stuff. Like, and that I think live is so important because a lot of people can't perform live. Mm. Like, that's what I've realized. A lot of people can't perform live, but um, I've just been keeping up to date with everything. I'm trying to do the whole round. Um, also, like making sure that I'm up to date with my business side as well. Um, yeah, so I've just been working on music, working on me, music, and yeah, giving you guys some of my own stuff. And you can definitely tell. Can I just say, I love, I love your work ethic. Like when I Thank see your you. TikToks, I'm like, this girl does not stop. Like grind must Thank go you. on. Like you <laughs> literally, I feel like a lot of artists are missing out on that. Like there's a lot of amazing talent, but it's also like not, put in like I think maybe because of the confidence and maybe like the self-doubt it's one of them things where people just feel like they're not good enough or they just mm. feel like you know what I just can't put myself out there and you literally I have the resources in front of me I've got it I'm gonna use it and your visuals are literally like you're taking us back to the early 2000s era I love that era <laughs> like literally you are taking us back like every time i see your visuals i'm like oh it's giving ashanti it's giving keisha cole and of course we're gonna talk about can't get enough because am i right in saying that can't get enough is the, the inspiration behind it is more of the mary j blige inspiration yeah why mary j blige first of all because we need to know do you know what mary is a legend in the game and she's yeah. incredible and i love the way mary can put her situations into a song and just make it fire so i was like okay this is a situation i've been through i'm gonna write it so um i wrote the song and when i was thinking about the concept with the video so i fleshed it out with um my sis and she's my director as well um shout out to grace mm -hmm. and we literally just listened to it and we were like, okay, we're going to do this whole theatre thing where it's just like me and a guy. And it's kind of like I'm reminiscing and I'm by myself. It's kind of like I just burst into a room, um, like with Be Without You when I was watching that video. Like, you know how she's like, there and we're like crying and, you know, then they flash back to her and the guy. And I was like, that we could do that, but modernise it. So... <laughs> Um, you know, I walk into a room and I'm like, okay, this is my stage, like, I'm going to run. And then I end up seeing the guy and I'm like, um, but yeah, no, she's a legend. And I love the way she puts her stories into music and makes it art. So I was inspired by that. And I was like, I'm going to do that with um, this song. Um, and yeah, I think the visuals for Can't Get Up is sick. I think even sometimes when I watch it, I'm like, I really you did that. You I did that. Did that. You did that. <laughs> comes to because of you your single because of you as well I maybe it's just me but others can disagree I don't know did it have like some kind of K 
Kerry Hilson inspiration. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Do you know what's so crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I first got that comparison and I listened to the song and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I, I, I love Kerry Hilson. But I, when, I, when I wrote the song, because um, I wrote it about two years ago, and when I actually did it, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't think about it. I don't think it actually came to mind. Um, but I wanted to have that old school type of feel, that yeah. old school love. You know, when you're in your bedroom with your girls and you're talking about a guy and then you're walking through the park. Like, I wanted to have that whole, I wanted to go back. I wanted that nostalgia. And um, But yeah, no, when I, when I heard that comparison, I literally went straight to listen to the song and I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> no, literally, when I first heard the song, I was like, this is given Kerry Hilson. Like, yeah. not because it sounds exactly the same, but it's given like the upbeat sound. I was like, oh, this is Kerry Hilson vibe. I love it. I mean, it's Madam Demina, but I love it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've got to ask you, when you hear, because I know you love R&B, you're, like, you're an R&B soul artist, but when you hear r&b the genre r&b forget the the music what's the first thing that comes to your mind because it's for the culture like what's mm. what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear r&b because you see it in your visuals but like i want to know from you um i think when i think of r&b i think of like real like raw like love it's the soul like i think it's from the heart Yes. Like, it's from the heart. Because even when you listen to R&B and, um, like, especially, like, back in the day, when you listen to their 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 lyrics, the music, mm -hmm. it's from the heart, you know? It's not just, okay, I'm making a song because it sounds good. No, it's literally from the heart. Um, yeah, I think it's just, that's, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And then I, I start thinking of singers, like, real singers, you know, um, that put their stories into this incredible genre and bring it to life and they add their little harmonies and all of this stuff but no I think R&B is really from the heart like you feel it you feel it do you feel like perhaps back then people were really like people were really in love back then like people were really experiencing heartbreak back then not saying that people yeah. are not experiencing heartbreak now but back then when you're experiencing heartbreak and then the artists back then, they would put it into their music and a lot of yeah. ladies could relate to it. Whereas now, like, it's it's like, it's a lot of mixed opinions, but back then you really felt it, like. Yeah, 100%. That's like, when, like I was saying, it's so raw. Cause it's so real, real and raw. Like they, they didn't sugarcoat. I think back then they did not sugarcoat. Like they would literally say, um, like, like I'm gonna use Kelly Price as like, an, as an example mm. her friend her song um friend of she was a friend of mine she literally says she was a friend of mine and her her friend laid with her man like she does they don't sugarcoat you know they just mm. put it out there you know um and I think nowadays we do but I feel like it's just kind of touching the surface it's very mm. it's very um cute with it mm. we're very cute with it instead of yeah he did this she did this kind of thing but um I feel like we're bringing it back. I feel like we're bringing it back. But I think definitely back in the day, they were just open. He did this. She did this. I'm in love with her. I, I, I like, you know, dancing in the rain. Yes. Floor. Like, they they did not care. <laughs> like, I remember, like, Brandy, care. the boy's mind. Yes, the boy's mind. Like, <laughs> they did not care. <laughs> so, where, 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 do you, where do you see when it comes to, like, UK R and B, like where where does it stand for you when it comes to that? Like, do you see it growing? What where, where do you what do you want to see happen? Like when it comes to like UK R and B, because we have some amazing talented UK R and B artists. Mm -hmm. But what do you want to see when it comes to that? I think, like you said, that we have an amazing R and B artist in the UK. I think I just kind of want to see, not even kind of, I want to see us finally getting the recognition that we deserve. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's getting there. It's definitely getting there because I think times have, um, they're changing. They're, it's getting better. Like we're becoming more recognised. But um, I know obviously the States has a um, bigger population and things like that. Um, and it's more like accepted over there. But I feel like 
especially because of how hard these R&B us R&B artists are going in the UK we need to get to a certain point where we're recognized you know mm-hmm. um but I do believe that the times are changing because there's a lot of R&B artists that are getting their flowers and I'm very happy about that you know mm. I think we've still got a way to go but I think we're getting there um and I just want to see R&B on the map in the UK like when people are like oh where can we go for good R&B not just the US mm. the UK like we're killing it too you know um yeah the same love that the Americans get with R&B we need to get that love too because we're killing it you know so did you obviously in this journey of um, being an, an artist especially being an R&B artist like did you feel like at some point even though you're you're quite young but did you feel like at some point you know what like this is really hard like I want to give up maybe I should move to the US because like for example um LMA LMA is in the US now so yeah um and you know she's doing wonders but did you feel like at one point like maybe the UK really isn't for me maybe I should move to the US at some point um I've never wanted to give up mm. like doing music and um R&B but I have thought about you know um going to America. I feel like all of us artists have had that thought. Like but I would love to start here and really be able to cross over and impact America as well like with my music like Um, have a wide audience that I can travel there do shows there and come back as well so I'd like to commute like back and forth Um, but I really want to establish something in the UK because this is you know um, Um, when I was raised and born you know so um, but yeah yeah (laughs) now if you had to choose one Mary J Blige song from your playlist that one song that is always on your repeat which one would it be? This is hard. Um, um, Depending on the vibe that you're that you're in, that your top face. Okay, okay. Um, I would say "Strength of a Woman." Ooh. That one's really been on repeat, like, cause life is hard out here. Like being a woman. <laughs> life is life is life. Is. It has been living. So that song has definitely been on repeat. Now, you know, I'm intrigued. I'm nosy. <laughs> who, 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 who was you relating that song to? Who was you talking about in your single, Can't Get Enough and Because of You? Was it two different experiences? Was it the same person? But no, it wasn't the same um, person. There were two different moments, like, in my life. Mm. Um, because of You was going through a situation and realising the love that I did deserve. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to flip this situation and I'm going to write a song of the love that I want to feel um, and that I should be feeling when I'm actually in love. Um, you know, when you go through a situation and it kind of makes you realise, okay, cool. Like, this is actually not how I'm supposed to be treated. I'm supposed to be treated like this. Mm. So um, that's why I wrote Because of You. I was like, I want to write a love song for all my people out there that want to be loved the right way, this is how I need to feel when I'm loved, you know? Okay. Um, and that's why I wrote it because of you. This is um, deep. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm intrigued. I'm invested. Okay. Um, and um, Can't Get Enough is, yes, it's about a um, situation that I was in. Um, and it was just kind of about coming to terms with, realizing like you know when there's something that you know that is not good for you but you're still there yeah and it takes you long to let go um Mm. but it was kind of like um the song kind of takes you on the journey of me finally letting go and so the first verse is like you know I should have known better um and then it just talks about all the things I should have known better about then it goes to the chorus but it's like okay cool but I can't get enough then it goes to the second verse which is like okay bear with me like I need to think about this am I am I making the right decisions like it made like and then it went back to okay but there was good times and then it went back to okay even though there was good times is it still right for me then obviously the chorus again can't get enough and then by the bridge I'm like you know what no I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this go because I don't have the time to be the person to teach you how to treat me. Like, you should treat me right. If you're not, I shouldn't be sitting here trying to teach you how to treat me, you know? We shouldn't Hello. even be 
together if that's the case so um yeah that's I kind of wanted to take it on a journey of the feelings that I went through and the stages in that um situation but yeah this this will be so relatable to to the to to a lot of of the women yeah yeah and I feel like a lot of people can relate to that especially right now like mm-hmm. you want to be loved the right way like we're, we're tired of struggling out here okay tired out here <laughs> we're, not, we're tired of suffering <laughs> <laughs> literally if you can't come correct see ya like <laughs> let them know <laughs> i gotta ask you mariam what's like your dream collaboration oh oh my gosh this is this is such a complicated question because I have so many people that I want to collab with. Um, okay. I'll give you three, three okay. choices, three choices. Okay. Oh, okay. I definitely want to collab with Jasmine Sullivan. Jasmine, yeah, Jasmine Sullivan. Um, Brandy. Yes. And. I would say for now, like, um, yeah, Coco Jones. I definitely want to collab with her as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I definitely see that happening. <laughs> Especially with um, Jasmine Sullivan. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Can I add one more extra? But this would be, like, not now, obviously. This is, like, would be a dream if the person was here with us today. Um, okay. But I would all, like, if Whitney was here, that would be my number one dream collab, honestly. Like, she's been such a big inspiration. So, yeah, that would have been a dream to work with her. We're going to speak into existence, all of this. Because like, it's, <laughs> it's, happen- it's happening. It's definitely happening. So I know you said that you spoke um, about you've got an EP coming out. But is there yeah. anything else that you're working on? Is there any collaborations that you're working on behind the scenes? Any visuals, any more visuals that we're going to be seeing? Let us know. Let the people know. I would say, um, yeah, so I've got my EP that is coming out next year. So watch out for that. I also have one more single that is dropping this year. And yes, when it comes to my my music, even if it's not a video, expect there to be visuals because there will be visuals and the visuals will snap every time. Yeah. So yeah, um, look forward to the visuals. My next single drops soon. I'm not going to release the date. Um till I'm ready but um yes I've got another single coming out before the end of this year and then next year is when my first like my first debut EP drops which I'm so so excited about because I've got so much in store for you guys but I don't want to spill too much but um yeah just stay tuned with my stuff like if you haven't already go and watch my music videos because of you can't get enough stream them on all streaming platforms add me on social media like just keep up to date with what I'm doing and on my social media platforms I always tell you whether I have a show or whether I'm releasing this or whether I'm doing this like just keep up to date with me so yeah and thank you for having me as well you're welcome listen I've been watching you I've been like (laughs) I've been, I'm a fan, okay? I'm a fan. Thank you so much. So yeah, I had to have you on here because I feel like your talent is just insane and Thank the you. world needs to see it and they are going to see it. They are seeing it. You're performing. Like, you are literally, like, your talent is literally, like, giving people goosebumps. Like, your, your gift and talent is making room for you. So just remember that because, like, it's onwards and upwards from here. And the yeah. EP... I gotta ask you, can we expect the EP like early next year, mid next year, or end of next year? Like what, early. What you can expect it early. So yep, Ooh. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah, you can expect it early. I'm I'm literally so excited. Like because I think when you're an artist and you're releasing your own music, it's just so exciting, you know, just mm. giving the world a taste of you. Um, than just because I feel like for the longest time people have heard my voice, but now they can actually hear my messages through my voice you know yeah. and my music so I'm and really- you're an amazing storyteller your visual you. gives storytelling so I, I just love the fact that UK R&B artists are giving us that old school R&B era back because we're, we're missing on that and we we, we need it okay <laughs> we need it <laughs> Thank you. But I want to say thank you so much, Marion, for coming to my platform. I really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, having me. I know me. you you mentioned where the people can expect from you, but 
where can the people really find you once again and any last words so once again thank you for having me and you can find me on all social media platforms mariam davina so that's m-a-r-i-a-m d-a-v-i-n-a that's instagram youtube tiktok facebook twitter all of it like you can find me all of there. And also on my YouTube channel, if you subscribe, you can find all my music videos, you can find all my covers and just keep up to date with when I release more music. Um, I'm on Spotify, I'm on Apple Music, Amazon Music, all the streaming platforms, whatever you use, I'm there. You'll see She's me. everywhere, okay. I'm everywhere. So <laughs> yeah, just follow me. My name is literally Mariam Davina on everything. I, it's all the same. So it's not hard to find me. And yeah, like I would just say, keep in keep keep up to date with my staff um and literally thank you all for your support thank you fats for your support like it means it means the world like especially being independent people's support means everything mm. you know because being an independent artist sometimes it could just be an artist in general it could just be overwhelming um but your support means the world so thank you for all your support literally keep talking to me as well like let me know what's stuff you want to see like more content you want to see um yeah and hopefully I can do more stuff like this as well so yeah oh I'm excited for you but also you. one last thing can yeah. we expect like when you drop your EP are we gonna expect like a, a performance not 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 like a concert but like a small mini performance you perform in your EP because I, I, I need to be there I need to watch you live <laughs> you can expect that um so I've got a couple like live versions of the song so you can expect that um and um yeah so when I do release the EP I will hopefully be booking some shows so I can do um a live performance of the whole project um and yeah not gonna talk too much but yeah you can expect definitely live versions Oh, I'm so excited. Thank well, you. thank you so much, Marion, once again for coming to my platform. I know you're very busy. I know you've got a gig that you're performing today, so I'm going to leave <laughs> you to it. But yeah, I really appreciate you coming to my platform and we should definitely see you on our screens very soon. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Well, have a lovely evening then. See you ya. Too. Bye.